Welcome back to the show, everybody. Well, changes on our skin can be common, especially as we age, but how can we tell when a spot is suspicious or not? Now, yeah, here with a refresher on the science of melanoma and how to spot a melanoma mimicker is dermatologist Dr. Renee A. Beach. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so before we get into this, I think it's important for us to just establish just a reminder of what is melanoma exactly and why is it so important that we know? There are a few different types of skin cancers diagnosed in Canada every single day. There's basal cell cancer, which we know is from sun exposure, sunburns. There's squamous cell cancer, which is also from sun, but actually can also occur from injury to the skin or when the body is immunosuppressed, like an organ transplant patient. And then there's melanoma. Melanoma is different in that, yes, it can be due to sun, but it can also happen with certain genetic syndromes. Mm -hmm. And it can even happen in places where the sun never gets to. So for mm -hmm. example, the bearded area, which is why we tell all people, shave off your beards once a year so that we can have a look at your skin comes in the genitals, it can come on the palms and the soles, and it can happen in all skin tones, so lighter skin tones, deeper skin tones, and unfortunately, it's associated with the most spread, so metastasis, mm -hmm. and also the lowest rate of survival, so death. That's wow. why. Okay, so what does melanoma look like, mm -hmm. and when should you consult a doctor if you see something on your skin that you're worried about? There's no perfect rule, but we often think about A, B, C, D, E. Now, A would be asymmetry, so one side doesn't look like the other side. Mm -hmm. B can be border, so instead of the border being smooth or arcaform, it's really jagged, irregular. C is color, so many different colors. You know, it's black, it's brown, it's white, it might have reds or, or purples in it. And then D is for diameter, so on the skin, we think about five millimeters or greater, sometimes being of concern, and then for the nail, usually three millimeters or greater. And Lastly, and most importantly for dermatologists, is evolution. So if a patient comes in and tells me this has changed and I don't have a good explanation for that in terms of what I'm able to see, mm -hmm. then that for me can be a concern, particularly if the top of it's come off or it's bleeding, it's an open sore, that isn't considered to be normal. All right, mm -hmm. so now that we have the signs of melanoma, let's talk about melanoma mimickers. These are changes to the skin that look like melanoma, but they aren't exactly. The first one we're gonna talk about is cherry angioma. What are the characteristics of that? Cherry angiomas are these red bumps or papules and they can show up on any skin type and they can look bright red, but they can also range to a deep violaceous color. And that's when it can get tricky for people because they think, oh, it's new and it's a deeper color, is this a problem? It can also bleed, which is normal. But again, all of these things can make people concerned, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not of concern, it's completely normal. We see it in people who, about half of the population by the time we hit 50 and about 75% by the time they hit their 70s. So at what point or at all should you get something like that checked out by a doctor? I think if you're concerned, you know, have it seen by a physician who, if they're unsure, they'll send you to a dermatologist. But the reality is they're normal and okay. everybody's going to have them. There's more people that would have them than people that would not. Okay. okay, so up next in the melanoma mimicker is something that is called a dermatofibroma. What is that? Dermatofibroma is very common. I actually saw this last week in my clinic and it can occur on limbs, men or women, mm -hmm. but I get a lot of brown or black skin patients coming in saying, this is new, what is it? Is it a problem? And it's really common, it's seen after minor trauma, mosquito bite, cut while shaving, ingrown hair. And because they're new and they sprout out and they grow, mm -hmm. people get really concerned, but they're normal. And in fact, I don't even offer to cut them out cosmetically because I find that the cosmetic result is actually worse than the spot itself. Oh, really? Okay. Because okay. I think, not to like, I know we're doing a segment, <laughs> but I think I Do have, have one. I think I have one. Oh my God, right? is that what that is? Is that what that is? <laughs> You may. Oh! <laughs> okay, we're gonna discuss this after the show. All right, so the next mimicker is a seborrheic keratosis. Talk to us about that. Separate as I panic keratosis. over this spot on my arm. <laughs> Separate keratoses, we definitely see every single day. And they look the worst. So they look, they're called granny warts or barnacles of aging, and they can be these brown, thick, um, craggy looking or verusiform plaques or, or areas larger than a centimeter. And they're basically your badge for growing into your 30s. So consider it your gift for getting into adulthood. Gift. What? Yes. <laughs> and they're totally normal. People hate them. And I'd say they're probably one of the most cosmetic, common reasons for cosmetic removal. 
Okay, okay. so you can get them removed. Absolutely. Okay, but yeah. do, if they start to change in size and stuff, should we get worried? Mm -hmm. They will change. It's not oh, a matter of okay. if, it's a matter of when. And okay. it's to what extent does it actually b bother you? Because it's not going to be medically of any concern or significance. Okay. okay. All right, so another mimicker could happen on your nails. What should we be looking for? Absolutely. I see a lot of my olive, tan, brown, black patients coming in with nail streaking that looks brown. And that, so they get really concerned and they say, well, this wasn't there when I was in my teens or my mm -hmm. 20s. And again, this is an extension of your melanin that's in that proximal nail fold area mm -hmm. and is simply outgrowing with your nail. And we see it again as a sign of mature skin. There's no reason for concern oh. unless it becomes a black band in which case I would be more concerned and I'd ask patients to see their doctor and if they're still unsure, then they would refer you to a dermatologist. Okay, is there a treatment though for this? There can be, if it is truly suspected to be a melanoma, the next step would be a biopsy. So we freeze the skin tissue, take a sample, get a report that states what it is, mm -hmm. in which case treatment would follow on a medical basis. But for the regular day-to-day -day brown streaking, honestly, I just tell people wear nail polish if it bothers you because it's not of any medical concern. Okay, okay I wanna just sort of step out a little bit because we talked about this on the show recently, mm -hmm. that there is a kind of growing movement, especially on social media, this sort of anti-sunscreen mm -hmm. Mm. or it's got endocrine disruptors or it's bad for you movement happening. Yeah. So can you set the record straight, especially for the young people mm -hmm. out there? Right, right. There are some influencers with very large platforms and huge followings who unfortunately have been doing a disservice and making all sorts of wrong claims about sunscreen saying that it actually causes cancer and that it's toxic or that it disrupts our body. And none of these are true. We know that there's mineral sunscreen agents like zinc and titanium, and then there's their organic filters that um, tend to absorb energy and that these are safe. You know, I tell my patients, don't wear sunscreen if you want three things, skin cancer, mm. wrinkles and thin skin, and pigmentation changes. And I have yet to find somebody who actually says, okay, then I won't wear it. We know that these are safe and that they protect us. In fact, we know that if we don't wear them, then we're gonna get all the other sequelae, all the other skin changes. Okay. Wow, okay, hope everybody recorded yeah. that. Yeah. Play that on repeat. Dr. Yeah. Renee, always a pleasure to Thank talk you. to you Such about all of this. Yeah. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.